vacation series, painting vacation series in Holland and windmill will be our theme for today. And we're gonna do some variations on this, both tonally and then with color. This is our image source, a beautiful shot of a spring day in Holland and a windmill reflected in a water. So I'm starting with a little drawing to set up the, the scene. And once I get uh, my drawing placed, I'll, I'm going to do a large wash behind to <clears throat> create the, the graded sky going from a little bit lighter to a little bit darker on the horizon. My intent here is to um, pretty much follow the, the image that you saw, maybe a little grayer day, but um, to do some brush play in the foreground where we have this field of flowers kind of rising up to our eye level to be a little more expressive with that and give that a little more focus. But at the moment, I'm working dry into wet, uh, placing some of those distant greens and blues into the still wet sky. I'm working at about 30 degree angle on the board, so gravity is helping me, me here to create the, the softness that you see on the horizon. And um, I'm leaving the shape of the little stream empty for now. I'm working on the foreground and trying to work with some a big brush and a lot of different strokes to create this uh, retreating field, this, this field that is retreating in the distance. In that field, we'll see a variety of flowers and and textures, and I hope to convey that through brushwork. So I'm very much working wet into wet uh, this stage. And uh, <clears throat> in the rest of the series, I, I have a plan to uh, do a variation on this theme. One variation will show a morning early morning sunrise we're using a little different palette and a much tonally a much more uh, quiet and mm, gentle scene so there'll be soft edges of course but the tones will also be closely related and uh, I hope to contrast that with a third scene which will we'll focus more on a bright, bright sunlight, late day, uh, breaking through the clouds and giving us um, a strong illuminated windmill uh, and um, bright grass in the foreground. So we'll see those later. Right now I'm uh, letting this foreground dry a bit and establishing the shapes of the windmills. Here's a repeated shape, so I'm looking to um, vary the distance and vary the size of the windmill as I build them up. And here's an opportunity. I, I realize that this foreground is half dry, meaning that the watercolor is very sensitive and usually it's a, a danger to start to work in it at this stage. However, we can provoke it uh, with some intention, some idea of creating a texture or a movement in the foreground. And uh, while it's not describing each flower, it is sort of describing a, a movement of grass and it could be flowers towards the back. So this was done while the, it, I put water into my brush and applied it to the foreground, which was still drying, half wet. And uh, these are accidentals that you see, but um, I'm planning to add some splatter to that and give more of a sense of flowers. Anyway, we continue with the windmill and um, staggering the heights, staggering the distances. This is the main one and I'm putting a little color accents into that to make it stand out a little more. Some calligraphy in the, uh, what do they call them? The, the arms of the windmill, try to do those. I'm trying to do those with uh, simple strokes. And um, 
we'll follow that up with uh, some attention to the water, the little stream that's wandering through. The uh, fun part about doing a, a series like this based on one image is you can look for different um, lighting conditions, different um, season conditions, and it really uh, evokes the imagination, asks the imagination to play a bigger role. And this is good for the artist because uh, the, the imagination ends up being a really strong uh, tool for us, a tool that we can exercise even when we're, you know, rendering something that's in front of us. Uh, the imagination can play a large role in how we evoke a mood or create um, a stronger effect, how we exaggerate what we see in front of us to give us um, a painting that's more, more of what we want. So this is, uh, what you're seeing today, is sort of an exercise in that this first rendering is depicting, um, you know, a quiet mood with uh, attention toward the foreground. So I'm muting the sky, I'm muting the tones in the back, softer edges in the back, and doing a lot of strong, high contrast energy through the foreground. Maybe the rain is, is, is coming or has passed, and so we see a lot of soft tones and a, a sort of splash of color in the foreground. In any case, um, this is sort of taking shape now, and uh, I want to do some feeling of um, flowers in the in the foreground. So I'm adding, painting some some stronger tones, and then I'll splash a few stronger tones in there as well. Sort of an abstract quality to this foreground, which. Um, I think is a good way to handle it because it's really easy to get bogged down in um, small things, minute things, and uh, you miss the larger picture. So I'm really trying to keep this loose as possible and uh, play with it. That's my whole attitude through this series is to kind of have a, a good time and play with the scene and see what comes out. And this uh, particular scene, the uh, the windmills have such a strong presence, and it's something I wanted to paint it for a while, wanted to paint, but the opportunity hasn't come up, and so I'm taking advantage of that now. You can see how the splatter kind of floats on top of that green and gives us a little bit of sense of... Um, flowers floating on top of stems. This paint has some um, yellow and some white to it, so it'll fade because it's quite um, wet, but I, I hope that some of these, these marks will remain. And that's, yeah, pretty much this is the finished image. And you can see they faded quite a bit, but the overall result is quite fun through the foreground. This is a play on the foreground and big effort to keep it kind of spontaneous. I was trying different things, including drawing into it with a wet brush, splatter, etc., to evoke that sense of a field of flowers. So here you can see a tonal study. This is a little bit of a variation where I've left the canal very bright and all other, the foreground is quite subdued, a similar way of handling the media, but more subdued than our first piece, as well as the background. The background is much more subdued and has softer edges, um, a sort of misty quality. And the river, because of that contrast, uh, the canal is really standing out. Here you see a color extension of that tonal exercise. So my focus was on the canal and I'm leaving more contrast along the front edge and through the canal. A wash of pink and yellow into the sky and a lot of blues 
in the foreground to give us a sort of misty early morning quality. Again, the tones are quite close to each other. In this next piece, the tones are quite far apart. If we think of this in terms of three tones, we have a really strong mid-tone and a dark uh, tone through the background and using the white of the paper to show the windmills themselves and the reflection. So on this, in this painting, the tones are extreme. In the previous one, they're closer together. You can think of it in musical terms as well as legato, slower and smoother uh, movements between notes, and staccato, where you have a, a brighter, sharper note, often further apart, staccato, legato. Anyway, uh, here's the color version of that um, piece which would, has more contrast, stronger contrast. And you can, this, while this is from the imagination, you can certainly imagine this scene, um, a passing shower, a passing um, thunderstorm has broken, the sun has broken through, and now we see a bright light in the background. And then as a third variety, I wanted to try something uh, along the idea of a sunset. And so I, I'm restricting the palette to three colors, uh, ultramarine blue, cad red, cad orange, and then neutral tint to give us those silhouetted shapes uh, in the background. In this case, I wanted to bring a little more life to the sky, and so I'm using a very strong cad red to generate that interest.